Uh, hey, Playboy had a great article, and I do read Playboy for the articles. Uh, <laughs> a rather long one. There. A rather long one about Martin Brest. I guess huh. I guess it had uh, I guess it had his name had the word breast in it, so they felt obliged to write it. <laughs> <laughs> but but the point of the article what tell us enlighten the us. point of the point behind the article <laughs> was what many of us have been saying. Uh, where is he? And he is uh, he has become like this John Hughes type Howard Hawk or Howard Hughes character uh, uh-huh. where some close associates speak to him on a regular basis, but for the most part, I mean, he's he's hidden. Well, I mean, he makes, has he just retired? He's just, I mean, you know, people do that. They, his close friends say that he want he does want to make another movie, but hmm. he made two costly costly disasters in a row. I think it would be difficult for him to find financing for a film, frankly. I mean, like even, you know, I mean, you know, the days of the days of his hit movies are really really long long ago. Oh, they're so. there. You know, look, I was reading a interview with Billy Wilder earlier today and there was a man who wanted to make movies very badly to the day he died. And he couldn't. And I mean, and I think if he couldn't, I, I don't. Martin, and the, the two that Martin Breast made that really, and they not really, but for me, Joe Black, his his producer said, "I'll get you the best editor in town. I will get you the best editor I can." And he was just like, "No, I don't want to touch the movie." So, yeah. I mean, what? Well, I'd be very curious. I see. What, I I really like Martin Breast, and for me, he's only had one. Out and out misstep, and that's Geely. But mm-hmm. Geely, Geely is a very fascinating movie in many ways. I mean, it's an interesting movie to watch because you you essentially see the seeds of what could have been a really good, interesting mm-hmm. take on a romantic comedy, and you see it right before your eyes how star power uh, de- degraded that to such a degree mm-hmm. that it's a complete embarrassment. Uh, yeah. I, I think it got swept up in that whole thing in, in the process of making the thing, mm-hmm. and I can't Im- I can't imagine you know how many kind of star demands and all that kind of stuff might have chipped away at the po- potential of this thing. Well, but, uh, don't you? you know, the film became like a sideshow almost to the actual because it really became part of the benefit of uh, the band and, uh Well, the movie the movie it itself is became a, it became a one word punchline. Yeah, know, I mean, it really, really became and, the punchline of their relationship. And uh, the movie was itself really became a sideshow to what the drama they were creating. All well, it's all not like yeah, I really. mean you're absolutely right, but it's not like the the movie itself is is an undiscovered gem. Like we have no, to have no. twenty years behind us to discover how good it is. It's not. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, it's, I'm a, just it's a, a, it's a creative, creative failure. So if Martin Brest does come back, and look, Martin Brest, I I think he's proven himself to be a really outstanding. Director with really good instincts. I mean, mm-hmm. look what he did with with Beverly Hills Cop from the original Stallone conception of it, mm-hmm. and cast Eddie Murphy in that, and it became a phenomenon. Look how he paired De Niro and Grodin, and yeah. the studio did did not want Grodin, and uh, he was forced to read like hundreds of other actors opposite De Niro, but he stuck by his guns and said, "I want Grodin." I mean, that's what makes that movie sing so much is the chemistry right. there. Going mm-hmm. in style, which is now being remade by uh, Zach Braff. Is it? Now, see, now for me, Going in Style is his one great movie. Like, I mean, like I love Midnight Run is like a tremendous entertainment, and same thing with Beverly Hills Cop too. But for me, Going in Style is like the absolute, uh, you know, uh, just a great example of late seventies filmmaking, early eighties filmmaking, uh that that took like a very, very difficult story. Like if they try and remake it, they're gonna make it they're not going to pay attention to the social implications of, of the of the story of these three elderly men who right. are forced forced into uh because they can't make ends meet are forced into uh robbing a bank. I think they'll probably you know, camp it up and and not pay attention to the things that make that yeah. particular film so right, right. Uh, emotionally affecting. But um, but I think that's his great movie. 
you know. No, it's a good one. Um, it's a very good one. Like you know, you talk about Martin Brest. I mean, I would I would welcome him back. The other one that we talked about endlessly on the show is Michael Cimino. I'd welcome him back too. I mean, yeah, who's yeah, yeah, many of these guys? I would Chimino, like to see both of these guys. Chimino is essentially the anti-breast, the anti-Martin breast. I mean, we're talking about <laughs> the anti-Martin anti breast. breast. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Chimino. I tried to cast Eddie Murphy in the Beverly Hills Cop. I tried to cast Mickey Rourke as. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I really like Meet Joe Black. I know Meet Joe Black. I know its shortcomings. But he wanted to make like a big scale, old fashioned Hollywood weepy, and uh, that movie that has moments that really work on me. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I'm kind of sentimental to it. But you're a soft catch when it comes to some of that stuff. Yeah, I, I am. I am. I can cry at a douche commercial. I know. 